Okay, one well, is just a sec. Hey, Cloudy, you there? Hello, oh, yeah. How's it going? What you got for us tonight? Uh, yeah, so, um, new argument I shall present to you. So, um, wait, do, wait, do I... I'm mute for a sec, so it's good. Kilgore, you're talking to me for a sec? Don't um, worry, we got it, we got it. You got it, cool, thanks. Okay. Also, I have to add, I feel like he talks to me like he knows... Do, have I met Jail Ward at all, ever? Yeah, you've been um, up here a couple probably. times. Yeah, I think. We oh, okay. Wait, wait. Yeah. When he when you were there? Oh, okay. Cool. Um, anyways, usually just focus on Xerxes, but like, okay, I guess Xerxes isn't here today. But anyways, um, you guys. So basically, I'm gonna reemphasize the contingency argument that was kind of last time. So basically, the whole point, right, is the two the existence divided into two things, right? Um, I'm gonna reemphasize it, right? And then I'm just gonna restate restate it. And if you have any like contentions, I can respond to them. But again, um, here's the basic understanding of it, right? It's um, okay. So there's there's no doubt there's existence, yeah, right? And it's divided into two things, right? Existence is divided into two things, right? This is sort of like Thomas Aquinas's contingency argument, but it's framed in a better way, right? So possible existence, right? is existence that does not need to exist, right? And existence can be arranged in any other way, right? And the existence is dependent, right? I think um, Detroit heard this argument, yeah? And like, for example, you have a, you know, a jacket. Yeah, it's dependent on the material. It's possible. It's a possible existence because it can be arranged in another way. It doesn't have to exist. And it's dependent on the materials that create it, right? Okay. And then there's a necessary existence, which is existence that could not be any other way, independent, self-sufficient, and could not be out of existence. Can we agree on those terms first before I continue? Yeah, cool. Uh, you guys there? I mean, I don't agree on those, but I'm, I don't know if you're talking to me. I think those are... You don't agree on those terms? Well, yeah, that, well, in so, in so, well, because presumably you want, you're trying to tie these to sort of common philosophical notions of necessity and contingency and so forth. And if you're trying to do that, you just got them wrong. So, I mean... If you're trying, to, if you're just stipulating, okay. if you're stipulating a definition, then okay, I guess. Not stipulating right. definitions. Okay, explain to me why my definitions are wrong, but like better, more clear, yeah, sure. clear. Okay, tell me. Go. go yeah, ahead. yeah. So, when we say something is necessarily true, or that an object necessarily exists, right, we're, we're essentially just saying that it could not have been the case that it was false, or that you know, thing, that thing could not have failed to exist. Um, that doesn't mean though that the object which is necessary. Um, doesn't have parts. Um, no, I think that it like doesn't. That. I I think the it does it. Do, I think the necessary existence does not have parts. It does not have parts. No. Well, it doesn't follow from the notion of necessary that it doesn't. Uh, why why would it not fall from the notion of necessary? The whole point of necessary is that it cannot be in any other way as independent, self sufficient. The whole point well, of possible existence no, is it's almost it it's like it can't not exist, right? I don't know what you mean by any other way. Okay, and yeah, necessary. No, a necessary existence is it can't not exist. And also, it yeah, it, it's it can it could not be any other way because it can, can be conceived. It could be different. It could be conceived that it's out of existence. Does that makes sense. Look, if I if I well, conceived that it's out of existence. Conception is a totally different thing. But look, if I if I say there's a apple that's necessary, um, and you say oh, wait, but the um, a bad objection to me would be to say. Well, but that apple could have been a different color, and so it's not necessary. That's not. That's a bad, a very bad objection. A good objection to, would me to, uh, to me would be to say, "Well, that that apple didn't have to exist. It could have not existed." I think that's true, and and undermines the claim that it's necessary. The claim that it could have existed differently <laughs> than it did, so long as it still existed, doesn't okay. well, undermine the claim that it's necessary. Um, wait, no, okay, uh, a necessary existence is, as I've defined in the terms, is that it can't, because, okay, if you, the example of an apple, it could be another color, like an apple, theoretically, it could be another color, but like an apple, right, it can, can be conceived that that certain apple at that moment could not have existed, right, that makes it contingent, yeah, so you need that necessary existence. Well, I agree that it comes from, it follows, it, it's true of the apple, that it didn't have to exist, I don't think it follows the, uh, Conceiving is a good argument for that. But I, I agree with the conclusion that the apple didn't have to exist. But my point again is that um, uh, the fact that something could have been some other way than it was um, doesn't mean that it's not necessary. Um, okay, explain to me. Explain to me. Let me hear your point of view. Why? It also doesn't. Uh, yeah. and, okay, not necessary because obviously I've defined it. But like you, I think last time you mentioned independent, right? Is that what you meant or necessary? 
or reclarify or independent is another thing um because here, here's what I'm going to say, because the thing about a necessary existence, I mean, the thing about possible existence, as I've defined here, right, is it's contingent on the fact that, like, everything around you, it could not have existed, right? It could be out of existence. Yeah, that's what makes it a possible existence. However, for um, a necessary existence, it could it could not be any other way, right? It could not be out of existence. In the sense right? that it could And it's independent as well. Right, I agree. Of course, I don't think there are any necessary existences in that sense. I think that, I mean, how do you say, no, again, here, my, okay, if you think that there's no uh, necessary existences, it's a massive contradiction because, again, you can't have dependent things dependent on other dependent things. That's impossible. A logical fallacy. You need, you need to have a necessary wait, existence. That's my whole argument. Wait, 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 you're making this connection between dependent things and necessary things. Because possible necessary. existence is, because it is dependent. Possibly, like, uh, again, contingency is dependent. Like it's dependent on what actually happened. Uh, it's a, a causal event that actually led that thing to exist. If it could, if it could be out of existence. Well, I don't. Why like, would I grant that every contingent thing is dependent on something else? I certainly don't. I don't grant of, that. In I fact, mean, in fact, I don't think it, uh, any of you can make sense of that. I, don't, I, don't I mean, no, no, no. I mean, how would you say that uh, again? A possible existence is first of all is depend like a, how could you say contingent thing is not dependent? I don't. Can you explain that to me? I Actually, I think the the alternative is just un, it's a non-starter, right? So I gave this example to um, it wasn't to you. I think it was the Dina girl, or whatever, someone else. Um, I've given it a few times. Um, if you think there are any contingent things, then the sum total of all contingent things is itself contingent, right? Even if there's a necessary thing in there, oh. <laughs> right? Okay, my my okay. The whole point is that contingency is dependent. On the fact that there needs to be something else. That's the whole like or basically you can't have yeah, contingent things that are independent. That's not no. no I'm I'm directly denying that, right? And it, okay, uh, okay, think, explain I why. Think of anyone anyone except for necessitarian who um understood the consequences consequences of their view would also deny that. Right. If you think there's one contingent thing, you have to deny that. So again I don't think there's one contingent thing. I think God is the necessary existence. No, no. As long as you think there's one at least one thing which is contingent. Regardless whether you think there are some necessary things, you have to deny this principle. It just strictly follows. So I'm giving uh, this example. Okay, I I don't I don't I don't follow though. Like I don't understand yeah, yeah. because again. Yeah, look, I was giving an example of how it follows. Right? So okay. You, uh, I, take, I, I again. Okay. Yeah. Um, take the sum total of all things. Right, the whole world okay. basically. is the whole okay. world that you know, or the fact that the world exists in the way that it does. Is that a oh, contingent wait. thing or contingent fact? Or wait, so you, oh, so you, so you're a determinist, right? You think that uh, the uh, the universe follows a necessary causal chain of events? Not saying that. I'm, oh, what then, I'm saying that, I mean, that's the only lot. Then, then, like, so you're saying the world is the necessary existence, right? Is that what? Um, what, what else are you saying? I, I'm asking. I'm, no, I, no, I'm actually denying that the world is a necessary existence. I think. So you wait. Could. So you think? Wait, can you explain to me how world. can you have a world with no necessary existence? Look, um, well, I can explain my reasons for that. Uh, you know, at least some things having to do with the um, the empty world being a logical possibility and metaphysical. And there's some arguments for that, the subtraction argument, the um, arguments based on logic and so forth. Uh, I, but that's not in, uh, pertinent to what I'm saying here. Um, mm. I'm just trying to make an argument for thinking that the principle that every contingent, or sorry, um, what was it again? That no, right, that every contingent thing has to be dependent on something else. Um, and the point is, is top high level view, the argument is something like, if there's any contingent thing, then the, the whole world is in a sense a contingent thing. The fact that it is uh, this way rather than some other way. No, no. Fact. Um, yeah, exactly. That's um, why there needs it to be. can't be dependent on anything else. It can't be dependent okay. on something else because it's to be like, we're talking about the whole world. <laughs> Right. Okay. Okay. Anyways, okay. about contingency, it it's it just incorrect what you said about that contingency can't be the contingency has to be dependent. It's like a, it ha, logically it has to be contingent because if something around if something could be out of exist it has to be dependent on what made that thing exist in the first place. It has to be. That's the only that's the only logical thing about mm -hmm. contingency. So you need a necessary existence to actually kickstart that series. For example, does that make sense to you? No, no, if you can, if you can, I, if, I, I don't. It's you've not exactly, given me a solid exactly. example of saying that something contingent can actually be, like, um, I'm, not I'm dependent. An example for thinking that something contingent cannot be dependent, right? 
because it cannot be dependent. Okay, explain. I don't. I genuinely right. don't know. I, okay, please explain to me. I'll be muted for as long. Take as yeah, long as you want. I'm gonna try to about, like listen really well. I'm thinking about the whole world in its totality, right? All the things that in fact exist, right? Think of that like collectively. Is the fact that those that that thing exists, the whole world, so to speak, a contingent fact or a necessary fact? Well, if it's necessary, then each thing in the world has to be necessary true, uh, necessary too. This is not a divisional fallacy. Um, we can show this logically. Um, if there's anything sort of by contrapositive, if there's anything in the world which is contingent, then the whole world itself is in, accordingly contingent. And the point is, on the principle that you're talking about, well, if the world I think the whole world is contingent, by the way. I think right, the world okay. is contingent, yeah. Good, good, good. Right. It, the world didn't have to be exactly the way that it was. Right? Okay, good. So yeah, exactly. um, That's why I believe in the necessary existence of God. Yeah, that's sure, my that's point. Sure. Yeah. Well, when I'm talking about world, I'm not just talking about like our physical world. I'm talking about everything that exists. That Presumably that includes God. Sure. Okay. So my point that I'm making is um, on your principle that every contingent thing is dependent on something else. Um, that would entail that the whole world <laughs> being contingent is dependent on something else. But that's an absurdity because there is nothing else on which it could possibly depend. Again, so you've just said, you've just said, you just said, you just said, I mean, I, I, I mean, uh, okay, here's what you just said to me. You just said that by implying what you just said, you have to imply that the whole world is contingent, which I just, uh, which I, I agreed on that premise, the whole world is contingent. Okay. Give me, give me two seconds, really. I just want a clarification when uh, Cloudy gets back, because I want to know if he's just going strictly from Anselm's or uh, if he's got his own, or Aquinas's rather, or if he's got his own argument he's working with. Can you go grab the problem yeah. yet? <laughs> What is it with you and Cromwell, man? You got a man crush on the guy. Dude, it's not healthy. Again, said, we said this in VC before. We make a good team at this sort of thing. Yeah, he's got that old wise Southern kind of, you know, persona thing, but. <laughs> when he's not drunk. Yeah, when he's not, well. <laughs> and then, and when is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Never. that begs the question. <laughs> No, 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 wait. Actually, sometimes he's not always drunk. Sometimes. No, I'm Less than six there. drinks in. I'm good. Hey, Cloudy, are you passed, back? Sometimes he's passed out. Yeah, I'm here. What's up? I wanted to ask you, are you going uh, from uh, Aquinas' uh, third way, or are you doing your own spin on it? Doing my own spin because, like, okay. I th I'm not just, I'm not doing, I could, because it's not just, like, Thomas Aquinas' uh, complete contingency argument because it also kind of, because this one actually tackles, like, Trinity a little bit. That's why, I like Thomas, I it's I have my own spin on this, so don't worry. It's not okay, complete okay, echo okay. chamber. Just yeah. wanted to know. Cool, cool. That's all. Okay, cool. Also, thanks for having me on stage, by the way, guys. Okay, anyways, um, as I was saying, so can you? So, uh, you just said that um, if you believe that a possible that contingencies can't be dependent, then you would say that the universe is contingent. I believe that the universe is contingent. Like that's why it needs a necessary existence to actually provide to actually create that universe. Does that make sense? No, no, no. By you, because we're getting we're conflating two different things here. By universe, we might be talking. I don't know, like the reality. Sorry, world, but right? okay. No, universe. I mean, um, uh, everything in existence. So, so can we uh, define yeah, universe uh, in that term? That's because yeah, yeah, I'm used to that. Because yeah, so, yeah. Cause, yeah cause universe, everything about, in existence. When I say world, yeah. When I say world, I mean it's common parlance to talk about just all existing things, right? The, whatever exists, yeah. <laughs> that includes. Yeah, so um, if it does, God, right? No, no, I think God is God. Okay, when I talk about the universe, I think of every single thing except God. I think of every single existence besides the necessary existence, which I'm trying to prove. Does can we agree on that term? That's when I say universe. Well, you can talk about that. That's fine. But I'm I'm okay, not cool. talking about the thing that excludes God. I'm just um, if God exists, right? If God exists, I'm talking about everything, including God. That's in the set of um, all things. <laughs> okay, okay. If you talk about that, but okay, then God can't. But my whole point is God. Okay, I I guess you can do that. But my whole premise is that God can't be compared to possible existence because there's nothing like Him. So if you come, if you well, say that, the whole universe, isn't he he's not contingent. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not he's still, contingent. He's still part of the reality. Whole, if he is, right? Yeah, he's part of reality. Yeah, of course. But he's not contingent. Yeah. Can we agree on that premise? If you're describing, if you're trying to prove me wrong, can we agree on that? Right, premise? obviously, okay. if God exists, he's not. Yeah, as you're defining him, yeah. he doesn't exist contingently. He's necessary. Yeah. Right? Of course. Okay, okay, cool. Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that on your view, 
there's there's God, which exists necessarily. There's all the other things. Maybe most of them are contingent. Maybe he like maybe some of them are necessary because he creates them necessarily or something, but uh, or that they exist necessarily independently. Um, but all the same, look if you if you took a, a view of the whole world, so to speak, which includes God and all those other things, the fact that the world is precisely that way is a contingent fact, right? I agree. Yeah, I agree. The fact okay. that the world is the way that it is right now, it is contingent. Right. But, but, um, well, we can talk about the fact, because uh, we, we can swap, flip between different senses and modality here. But the point is that the, the sum total of all existent things is itself contingent because, um, again, the world, so to speak, didn't have to be exactly the way it is, and therefore it's contingent. Yeah, right? I agree. I agree with that premise. I agree. Okay. So now we have to, so, from your principle um that all contingent things are dependent on something else um we have to say that this this the entire world is dependent on something else yep right the entire world is so, dependent on something else but what else there's nothing apart from the entire world on what you could depend. i just said there's god i just said there's necessary existence god you can you just said there's nothing god is a part of the world right there's no i get again we just agreed on the premise world. that when we're referring to the world or the universe we're referring to the fact that god is not contingent so i'm saying every single thing in the universe and the world is contingent right okay but god outside of that sequence right part of uh part of part of the contingency because the whole universe is contingent right because it can be conceived in different ways right and every single existence is contingent because it could not have existed but god is the necessary Necessary existence, so he's not so he's not applied to that standard because God is not contingent. So when I when I agree with your when I agree with your premises, it's because I'm assuming that I mean maybe you're telling me wrong, but then I would disagree with every single one of your premises because the reason is is because there is a there is a need for a necessary existence. There is a need. It's otherwise it's it, it, you can't logically have no God. Because the reason is, is because you can't have dependent things relying on dependent things and contingent things are dependent, right? That's my whole argument. That's the whole basis of my argument, right? Yeah, my and as you just mentioned, and you just mentioned really quickly, um, wait, okay, and yeah, as you just mentioned that the whole, the whole world, right? It's because it can be conceived differently, right? Because it can be arranged differently, right? It's, um, it's contingent, right? So I agree with that. The whole world, right? But now outside of that, but who created that world? And I'm not saying excluding God, the whole world. And the reason is, is because God is eternal and God could not be any other way, right? He is necessary. He is independent, self-sufficient, could not be out of existence. He doesn't have body parts, right? Like I don't believe in like a gendered God, right? I don't believe in a male God, right? He doesn't have body parts. Objection, right? if you, if you okay, say, I, uh, I, I don't understand your objection. I just, I genuinely, okay. Can, because the reason is, is because you say the whole world is contingent, but I've just established that God is not contingent because God, God is the necessary existence no, as I'm describing no, no, no. in my argument. No, I, I'm not saying, when I say the whole world is a contingent thing, I'm not saying that every part of it is contingent, right? Um, Which part of it aren't, aren't contingent? Well, it could be that God is part of the world and he's not contingent. By world, again, I'm talking about everything that exists. Let's, let's keep that on. Okay, but then you're objecting to the existence of God. So what What in the no, world no, that you no, know I'm of not. is not contingent? Not. Well, you're not? Look, Do you believe in God? No. My argument against this principle that all contingent things are dependent isn't relying on the assumption that God doesn't exist. I'm trying to show that even on your view, you should reject that principle, right? But no, because, I disagree. Well, but it just follows, right? You, you agree that the whole world, including God, including all the things that exist. No, no, not including God. Uh, not including God. I okay, believe the okay, whole world, you, excluding God, is contingent. Okay, do you think that the whole world, including God, is contingent? No, no, I don't think so. Because God is not contingent. I think, I think including God... Yeah. Like if you think of bro, but the world does not include God. I mean, the whole world, in a sense, is he's outside that sequence. When I'd refer to the universe, it's every single possible existence, and God is the creator of that whole universe or the world, like you like to call it, because I don't know, universe. Some, some term. The world. I'm just talking about everything that exists, right? God everything that exists. God, if, if he exists. No, but I don't think you can put God and possible existence in the same. A thing because if now god mm -hmm. now god if you if you put god next to his creation and saying that um yeah well is is do you think the whole world involved including god is contingent because it can conceive differently i mean yeah including god if you just throw god in that complete mix of stuff then sure yeah because and the reason i say that is not because god's existence is contingent but because everything right. besides god's existence is contingent so i think the premise right. of the analogy itself is flawed that's my whole point no I, everything I, you said there is is fine right uh, the totality of existence, including God itself, is contingent, even though God is necessary, 
because there are other things which are contingent, right? Something which is composed in part of contingent things is contingent, as in, as a, as we're considering it here. But he's, I don't, I know God is not composed of contingent things. He's not, he doesn't no, no, have no. body parts. I he's never immature. said that. I never said that. Okay, okay. I said the, the whole world, though, is also composed of contingent things, not God, right? The whole world yes, is yes. composed of necessary things, or maybe just one necessary thing, God, and uh, other, and, and then contingent things, right? But the fact that it's, the fact that it's composed of contingent things, partly, right, at least, um, entails that it itself is contingent. And my point is that, okay, if the whole world, including God, um, is contingent, even though some of us parts might not be contingent, i.e. God, then your principle um, applies here. It would entail that the whole world, including God, right, the whole kind of sum of all things, is itself dependent on something else. And that's a consequence of your view, right? That all things that exist depend on something right. else, apart from that. Wait, no, I, all, all, again, again, I want to make this clear, all possible existences. Yeah, no, God is not. everything, the sum total of all things, right? It's like, uh, if I'm, oh, just, if I say the whole world, I'm treating it as one thing, right? I mean, yeah, no, but oh, God I could. Mean, um, I'm sorry to, sorry to jump in there. Um, I have a quick yeah. question. Detroit, can I ask a quick question? Cloudy, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Yeah, just, it's about the, you know, this concept that God, that everything is contingent upon God, God is the only non-contingent thing. Um, so how how is it that you determined that God, that this definition or this attribute of God, that God is contingentless, God is contingent of nothing, this is an attribute of this God, how is it that you determined that this is uh, real? That God is real? Okay, no, okay, how, because... How did, you, how did you determine that that is a correct attribute of this being? He's necessary. No, that's just because that that's not definitional. It is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Okay, so he's I'm not curious by what methodology you're able to determine okay, okay, the validity so, of that particular definition. So you're okay. So you're saying it's okay. So you're saying that um, how did I get to the conclusion that God is not contingent? Yeah. No, I'm saying how did you determine the truth of um, that attribute? You're saying that God is truth not of that. No, because I think I'm it's a lot. It's no, the only no, logical no, possibility. Well, the only logical possibility. Well, why is it the only logical possibility? Is it because I mean, that's what I was God, just is, God is simply defined that way? No, it's because it has to be the case because my whole basis for my argument was you can't have dependent things dependent upon other dependent that's, things. But that's only if God is defined a certain way, right? And God is defined as a necessary existence because okay. at least this is what the Quranic thing is. Uh, okay, is okay, he no, cannot... no, hang on, hang on, Cloud. Just relax, man. Okay, just continue. Hang on. Relax, bro. I'm, so, I'm chill, bro. So... It, you you say this. This is your argument because this is how you define God, correct? Yes, sir. I think most monotheists also. Besides, I think I don't know. Oh, okay. I think Trinitarians can't really. A yes, a I don't yes know how they suffice. can settle that. Oh, cloudy. A yes would have sufficed. This is how you define God. Yes, this is this how is I define. Your, yes, this is what your argument yes. is predicated is predicated on. Yes. How did you determine that that definition is correct? Is is the true representation of reality? Because it's the only way it could, it's the only possibility. Mm -hmm. It's the only, because without the necessary existence, you wouldn't exist. That's my whole basis. No, and the reason. No, no, Cloudy. That's the I, I have to explain. Cloudy, you're referencing the argument. I don't, I'm I don't understand what, okay. I'm don't. asking you the methodology by which you determined that the definition that you're giving God is, rep, is actual, um, is the actual representation of a be of this being that's there. I mean, that's like asking, how have you determined that one plus two is not four? As I've just said before, it's logically no, one impossible. Plus two, one plus two is not four is an abstract, is an abstract language. Okay, to describe, yeah. okay. To listen, okay, okay listen, look, listen, okay, again, you need to li let, me, let me speak here. The whole re again, the reason I tie back into the argument is because I still need to explain the argument because no, the whole no, no, again, no, cloudy, yes, I do, no, cloudy, yes, I do. No, cloudy, again, again, cloudy, again, cloudy, see, again, cloudy, you're not letting me speak, dude. Cloudy, I need you to hang on a second. Okay, dude. You don't need to explain the argumentation. That's the assumption that you're assuming that we haven't heard it before. I am speaking to your methodology, okay? I'm speaking to your epistemology. How did you determine, by what methodology did you determine that this defin this particular attribute of God is the truth? Because your entire argument is predicated on how you define it. I'm asking you, how did you determine that that definition is actually the case. Okay, okay, here. Let me, let me, okay, no, give me, let me give you an answer. Okay. The Wait, so, so, what was that, Detroit? Well, I, don't, I mean, it's just, it's obvious, right? He has this definition uh, for God. He has some arguments. The, the conclusion the, the of which is, 
Is it there's something which satisfies those criteria? Well, it's true, but point. No, I. Now here's the problem. Cloudy is making an argument that this is the kid, that this is the state of it. This is the of, of relation of human beings to God or all contingent things to God. The argument is predicated that is predicated on that God is defined a particular way. Okay, that there are yeah, attributes yeah. to God, and these attributes are correct. Because if these attributes the are correct, is- then hang on. If these attributes of this yeah. God are correct, then the arguments follow from them. I'm asking you how you determined that those attributes are correct. Well, there's two things you might I mean think there. You haven't been correct. Yeah. Think, okay, I'll, I'll go and yeah. then you can go. Okay, okay the whole yeah. okay the the incorrect the flaw with your reasoning is I'm I'm not saying God is real and here are the attributes of God. I'm saying that because of the logical like the, there's a logical necessity for a necessary existence because the, again the argument you can't have dependent things based on dependent things and that necessary existence with those attributes right it, that that's the only possible way a necessary existence can be and I define that necessary existence as God. Not so. You're determining. You're, you're making the assumption. No, you know, you know, you're making the assumption that that existence is necessary. But we're saying that that's not an argument that we're making. And two, oh. uh, the universe could be cyclical, and the death of the, the death of one could be the birth of the next, and that could go on ad infinitum. Again, the the, no the universe. Okay. Just again, a result of natural process. Okay, okay. Wait. So you just said you just said um, that that you think that the universe itself. Is the, by that logic, are you like a complete? Are you a hard determinist? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like this. This is a hypothesis. There are questions out there that I don't have the answers to, and I don't assume that I have the answers to them. I accept the question mark I'm not until I'm either. justified in putting an answer in that place. It's not a question mark. I'm trying to prove to you right now, and I've, and I've, I mean, I'm debating with Detroit okay. until you completely interrupted me. I have an argument to present, no, but then no, my no, whole here's argument. The, no, Cloudy, here's the problem. Again, this dude. is why I asked the question from the very beginning. You are proposed. See, you say that you have evidence for God. And then the evidence is you're giving your argument for it. I'm going back to the very, very beginning of that and saying that your entire argument is predicated on God being defined a particular way. How did you determine that God is, in fact, defined in this manner? Because Okay, how did I determine that God is defined in that specific manner, yes? Yes. Again, I have just told you you, many times. Contingent list, contingent list. God is contingent list. How did you determine that God is contingentless? It's, is it true just because okay, you listen, defined listen. it that way? Because there is no, uh, because if there is no contingent list being, forget about God, ignore God for two seconds, okay? Because you don't know the definition of God. This is my definition of God, but every time the, God, the word God gets you triggered. But if there's no contingent list being, then there would be no existence. There would be okay, no existence. Okay, fantastic. Evidence for that point, please. Okay, evidence for that point is because contingency is dependent, and you can't have dependent things upon unless dependent system, upon other dependent the system things. is cyclical. Le- okay, is, okay, it's a, right. a cycle. No, no, system no, no, no. Cloudy, or no, no, cloudy, answer, answer cloudy, cloudy, answer cloudy, answer cloudy question. stop, cloudy, stop. I'm answer not my saying that this is the case. I've answered I'm saying that there is an alternative explanation beyond the one that you're asserting. Okay, if the universe is cyclical, then what's the, what's the, okay, if that's the universe is cyclical, then is it a cause or effect? It's cyclical. The death of okay, one. See, again, the, again. The see, that doesn't man. change the fact that there needs to be a cause. No, it could be. No, it, it literally could be that ad infinitum. For it's the sake of argument, it, it, jail, yeah. jail. For the sake of argument, because him and Detroit have been going at this for a few minutes, I want them to get some closure to it. Let's, we'll just run with Cloudy's definition as it is. And I kind of want to, I want them to finish this, uh, this rabbit hole they're going down. Because I think it's just only fair. Uh, Detroit kind of took the reins on this one. No, no problem. I'm sorry about that. I, th- I thought the answer would come a little bit faster than that. Sorry about that, Detroit. Or continue on. Um, Dan- Anyways, I, I just want to say quickly on on uh, what Warren was saying, and I was uh, that I was taking issue with. Um, this when we say, how did you determine that definition is correct or that attribute is correct or something of God or something like that? Um, there's two things you might be asking there. One is like. Well, how do you determine that this is like the right definition? I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you just have a definition. The question is, the relevant question is, how do you determine that there is something which satisfies this definition? And um, you know, the, this is argument, right? He thinks the argument establishes that there is something which satisfies that definition, and so counts as a thing defined. Um, if that makes sense, right? Um, now I'm objecting to the argument, and I'm trying to give a reason to think that. Um, even on his view, uh, this principle that every contingent thing is dependent on something else has to be false. Um, I mean, I think it's 
calls for other reasons as well, but I think <laughs> it uh, certainly yeah. has to be called so long as there's one contingent thing. And there has to be, okay, you can't say that there's, there has to be, again, as I've mentioned before, okay, let me give you a cosmological example, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say we have a tree, right? Yeah, we have a tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. so the tree, yeah, it requires the sun to photosynthesize, and if the sun didn't exist, the tree wouldn't exist. Can we agree on that premise, yeah? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so long as the tree will exist, the sun will exist, right? Okay, and the sun itself we'll is part of its own order. Period, okay, wait. And the sun itself is part of its own order, part of its own set, and it depends on other things in order to exist, right? Okay. Now, if you have this, if you have like many things in the set, you go bound down, 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 right? At the end of the set, an independent thing is required, right? Now, the independent thing, yeah, can only be one because if it was more than one, it could be conceived that it can be arranged in another way, right? And that makes it contingent. Right? And as we've and my whole premise is that contingency is dependent because it could be out of existence. So you need something to actually cause that existence, right? Okay. No. And you can't have two mm -hmm. things. That, give me a, give me a real That's life what example. I'm objecting to. Okay. Now give me a real life example of of like you refuting that claim of something well, the, that's contingent the, and not dependent. The easiest example is the one that I've been I've been giving this whole time. All the sum total of all things, the whole world, so to speak. The whole world is a contingent thing. Regardless whether you think God is part of it or not, um, so long as you think that there's at least one uh, contingent thing that's part of it, um, it, it just follows from the fact that there's at least one contingent thing, yeah. that the whole, the whole world, world is contingent. And then if you say that every contingent thing requires something on which it depends, apart from itself, then the whole world would require something which, apart from itself on which it depends. But it can't because there is no such thing. So the principle. Okay, no, again, I say, okay, again. So you said, okay, so basically your argument is that the universe itself is contingent, right? And that it depends on nothing. Yeah, that that's the premise, right? That's, I'm pretty sure I'm like, yeah. Okay. The, the, you see, the, the whole world is contingent, but doesn't depend on nothing, correct? Okay, yeah. The whole world is contingent. Okay. But the, the problem with that is, as I've defined earlier, is for contingency, Right. The thing is, it could be out of existence. Right. The, a pen that I have, right, a mm -hmm. pen I'm holding right now, this pen could be out of existence. Right. OK. That universe in that specific, specific way, right? it could be out of existence. Like that universe, the right. universe could be out of existence. The certain mm -hmm. like the certain ways that the universe is arranged right now. Like if you let's say we have a set, right, the, the set, like, you know, how they have the tree, the sun, right? Say D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. Correct. Yeah. And it goes on and on off guard. Okay, if I take D4 out of that series, yeah, it can be conceived in the sense that that thing, right, it can be conceived that it could not, that it could be, that cannot exist. It could be conceived differently, right? That's the whole point is that every single thing, right, it needs to have a necessary existence because it could be out of existence, yeah? If something is conceived that it can be out of existence because of how it's arranged, it needs a necessary existence to actually start that causal chain of events, not even causes, just things that make it non-contingent so that it's in existence. Because the necessary existence, right, is something that could not be any other way and is and could not be out of existence. Well, you're just not responding to the objection, right? Okay, uh, how am I not responding to the objection? We have the whole world that's contingent, right? Does it have a, something on which it depends or not? Yes, yes. I, it has to have something it depends because it is contingent. Well, there's nothing on. There's nothing apart from it on which it could depend. So I just said the necessary on? existence. The necessary. The existence. necessary existence is already part of it. It's already included in the set. So unless you're saying. Oh, no, it, okay, okay. When you say itself, the necessary existence is included in the set, no, I disagree with that premise. The necessary existence, the one that's starting. That was just the set, a that's independent. That was just stipulation. How is that a stipulation? With how I'm talking about because the whole, the whole said, reality. I'm talking about the world, right? I'm talking about everything that exists, right? If that includes a necessary existence, then so be it, right? I'm just saying that okay, you're um, rejecting my stipulation. It's just ridiculous. You're just not responding. How, to how am I reject? I am rejecting your stipulation, and the reason I'm rejecting your stipulation is because, again, as I've constantly, constantly said, is that every single thing in that reality is dependent. It is depend. Every single thing is dependent, and also the fact that if it can be conceived in a different way, if it can be arranged in a different way. And it has to have a necessary existence, which actually makes it in that specific order. How did you determine that everything in reality is dependent? Every single contingent thing is dependent. Prove me wrong. Every single thing, actually, that you see in reality is dependent besides God. Because how every do, single... How do, you, how do you know that? That smells like okay, a can you tell him? Fallacy. 
Okay, can you can you tell me right now anything that's anything that you see around you that's independent? Energy. Again, the whole thing about energy though is you don't even we don't even know what energy is itself. That's the Look, thing. This is all well, what about actual point, matter? Right? That's the whole point. The whole it's all about could have been a different way. It could have not existed. Um, but nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, um, it's not dependent because there's nothing else on which it could depend in the first place. And I just so said the necessary lost. existence because okay, if the you have a, existence if you is already have... included in it, right? It can't depend no, on it's itself. not. No, again, the, the the fact that you just say a necessary existence already included in it is wrong. No one agreed you, on that. Well, premise. you'd only you can only you can only say that if you think there isn't something that's necessary, right? Because I I think the I necessary existence. If you put the necessary existence in this. Okay, if when you put the necessary existence in, it, in the same set as exists. dependent things, okay, mm -hmm. look at this. If you put the necessary existence in the set of dependent things, that's inherently, that's that defies what a necessary existence is. Because the necessary okay. existence is the one kickstarting that dependent series, right? Because, uh, again, the irrelevant. series of the universe. Right. How is that obviously relevant? I can put it in, uh, how is, obviously, I can put it in the same set because you think it's still a thing. Right? You think it still exists. So, if we're talking about all things that exist or all things, whatever, um, then it'll fall under the same set. It's already, it satisfies that criteria. So what, what this point that, well, okay, there, there's different things in this set. That no, it doesn't, no, it does not. Because again, criteria and some other satisfy those is irrelevant. Because everything, okay, every single, ex okay, every single possible existence, right, is, mm -hmm. is dependent. Is dependent, right? So you, the necessary existence is independent. Oh. How, no, that doesn't make any no, sense. But, no, that's, that's is, the basis of my argument. Okay, now if you ask me to prove it, that's what basis. I'm going to do right now. I'm but you can't, that, again, again, you can't say that the existent, you can't put the necessary existence and the dependent existence together when they're two completely different things. I think that's a flaw in the argument. That's my point uh, right now that look, I'm making currently. Look, do you, do you agree that both contingent things and necessary things are things? Yes. I mean, yeah. Good. So we can put them in the same set. That's all I'm doing. I mean, okay, not in the set, and not in the sense that because in my example that I've given, you can't do that though. Because yeah, you're classifying mm -hmm. them as things. Everything has something in common. But the point of my argument is that the necessary existence, the independent thing, kickstarting okay. that dependent okay. series. Okay, Detroit, you guys right. have literally gone around and around this like ten I'm just times. gonna let me let me give. Uh, I'm just gonna take thirty seconds to make clear the argument I'm making, and we can move on, or someone else can take over. So the idea is this, right? The whole world, that that is that which is constructed out of all the things that exist, that in fact exist, um, is itself a contingent thing because it, it has contingent parts. Maybe it has necessary parts too, but it has some contingent parts and that's enough for the whole thing to be contingent. Um, wait, wait, hold up. Really quick question. I'm just going to have to interject. Do you think okay, that uh, because of, do you think because it's, a, uh, do you acknowledge the fact that because the universe is contingent, it could be out of existence? Yep. Again, that's why there is the necessary. There, that's why there is the need for a necessary existence that could not yeah. be out of existence to actually kickstart that universe. Because if the universe could be yeah, arranged you're, in a different you're way, talking about or could universe here, and not the way that I'm talking about the world, right? world. Because again, world. well, the world includes God, right? So then you're saying that the world, including God, would require a necessary again. existence apart from it. But that's in case. Again, God is the necessary. God is the necessary. Okay, okay, okay. And everything okay, you around guys, you guys is possible. Right, we're not. I'll just, we're not, I'll, just, we're not. I'll just finish the the difference I'm always making. All right. So the sum total of all existence, whether that includes God or doesn't include God or includes other necessary things, it's irrelevant. It includes contingent things, and so the whole thing itself is contingent. On his principle, um, which says that all contingent things are dependent on something apart from itself in order to exist. Um, on that principle. The whole world being a contingent thing would be dependent on something apart from itself to exist. But my point is that by stipulation, we're talking about the whole world, right? And the whole world is contingent. And there can't be something else apart from it because otherwise it would be included <laughs> in the whole world. And so it can't be dependent on something else for it to exist. And so it can't be dependent. So but how does it justify, how does you justify leaving God out of that set, I guess, is the question. Well, all he's doing, essentially, uh, from, from my perspective, is saying, oh, I'm not, I mean, I guess I don't accept your way of thinking about these things or, how, you know, of talking about the world in that way. Or he just keeps repeating that, ah, but this whole set of dependent things requires something independent, necessary on which it, uh, for it to exist, which is just to repeat the argument and avoid the objection that I'm making. Okay, my, no, my whole point is I object your point by saying that the contingent, that contingent things are independent because if they can be arranged in another way, if they could be out of existence, it needs a necessary existence to actually create it in that certain way. Does that make sense? That's what, yes, that's what except establish. that, no, it's not, it's not even just that it's not established. It's that my argument directly refutes that. 
right? It's actually a direct consequence of things that you agree to that that principle has to be false. No, right? Okay, tell me what I agree. To. You agree there are contingent things. You agree that the whole world could have been another way than it was, or could not. Okay, not again, the whole world besides God, besides God, because God that's, is necessary. That's what he's. Why are you saying out. besides? Okay, there do you is. do you agree that the whole world, including God? Um, which is just whole world including God. I mean, that's like I mean, that's like saying okay, um, there's let's say it's getting a red and blue pen, and do you think th does this set is this set blue? Like, yeah, there's a blue pen in it, but that doesn't change the fact that that red oh, pen no, is an exception. Does that make sense? No, no, that's they... like saying that's that's like saying because again, when I classify the current existence that we have, the current world that we establish, right? Mm -hmm. I'm establishing every single thing that is contingent, and you've agreed to the fact you've you've established this, we've established that you think everything is contingent, correct? I do think really quick. All, yes or no? Yes or no? They ray. I think all objects are contingent. Yeah. Okay. That's my view. I'm not. I'm not relying on that here to make this argument. Okay. Okay. Anyways, right. So if you think, yeah, that because all ob if you think everything is contingent, then you can't put. If I'm defining a necessary existence as something that has to be there in order to create a universe because it can't be contingent, then you can't put it in the same set. You can't compare it to contingent things. You can't compare a creator to the creation and put it and classify it as one. You can't do that. Can you because you see what I mean? Does that make sense? No, you already you already accepted that there is at least some comparisons that can be drawn. One which is that I mean, they yeah, exist. there are some comparisons, but not the comparisons yeah. that you drew. That's what I'm saying. My only comparison look, if we can talk about them as things and as being part of the world, right? <laughs> then um that's the only comparison that I'm drawing, right? It's they're part of the world. The world is a thing that's contingent. And it the concludes world, again, both. again. But God is that God is the exception. To that my, okay, my point is that the necessary God. existence is needed, right? Okay, again, which is God. That's what that's what I've established, right? Okay, and God. Okay, and the whole world that you talk about today is just a bunch of contingent things, and it would be nothing without the existence of a necessary existence that could actually create that contingent thing. Because contingency is dependent on how it could be out. It, because if it could be out of existence, right, there needs to be a necessary existence that could never be out of existence to actually create that universe. That's what I've been can emphasizing I, over and over. Can I ask you, you, you just keep reiterating the same argument? I, I know he does. I know he does. Isn't, isn't, isn't addressing the criticism. Well, can I ask not, you why? I'm not, can I, 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 can I ask you why addressing you, the why criticism? Why you have the position that the uh, the universe everything in the universe is contingent why do you hold that position oh me yeah because yeah, i think i think the empty world is a as a logical possible world so it could have been that nothing exists I don't, I don't think there's any logical absurdity that follows from that but if the empty world is a logically possible world then it's not necessary that there is anything and it's also not this is um and there's also not anything which exists necessarily. Those are two different things. Um, because if there were, then there'd be something in that world. But, I mean, that um, in all possible universes, it could literally be a universe that has one less particle than us, one more particle than us, and then you know, yeah. plus one, minus one in both directions. Yeah, you, you, so what you're touching on there is uh, sometimes, um, I actually briefly mentioned this in passing earlier, um, uh, on the subtraction argument, which is something along the lines that, well, there's n many things that exist, right? Presumably, um, maybe it's infinite, but um, uh, the point is Even that if you... there could always be fewer things, <laughs> and that exist possibly. Um, and the idea is that until you get to zero, but there's no um, contradiction entailed by there being nothing. It's just that there are things, but none of them had to exist. That doesn't even if there's a multiverse. By the way, I just like to address that thing. Again, it still doesn't tackle my argument because it's still I'm not the, it, it's still no. But like somebody said something about infinite universe, right? What did I miss here? Was it that jail? I was saying right? in, in, all, so. in, in, in all okay. possible, in all possibilities. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, in all po if there's a if yeah, there, even if there's a multiverse, it still doesn't attack my argument. And the reason is well, is because it can be conceived. No. Okay. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, Cloudy, I think that we are going round and round on this one, and. Uh, We've been on this uh, this particular one for quite a minute, and we got uh, 121 people listening, 16 people with their hands up. So we got some people we got to get to, but uh, I do appreciate okay. you coming up, Cloudy. Okay, and uh, maybe we can pick it up again in the future. Okay. Okay, sure. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bud. All right. Thanks for talking. I think the the one.